Race number seven at uh, Kentucky Downs on Saturday is the Music City Stakes. This is a grade two run at six and a half furlongs on the turf, of course, for three-year-old fillies. And this is a really nice field. Um, <laughs> excuse me. You've got uh, some stakes winners here in uh, Pounce and um, uh, regulatory risk for Chad Brown. Uh, you've got uh, Simply in Front, who had a good second in, in, up in Canada last time. Time to Dazzle ran a monster uh, at Woodbine in that same race. Carry You for Cherie DeVoe. Uh, DeVoe. Uh, Crown Imperial, who uh, was pretty prominent at two and uh, does have a positive record over Kentucky Downs. And uh, Amid's Waves, who was another pretty prominent two-year-old, been a little disappointing as a three-year-old. And then uh, Pipsy, the uh, the import, who, who's been here for a couple of races, uh, pretty good in his first one. So this is a pretty deep field. we got some uh, regulatory risk for Chad Brown trying turf for the first time. And then we've got Vive Vuv, who uh, just ran at Saratoga and uh, had a pretty good second. So this is a nice field. Got a few cutting back as well. If we look at this field, uh, I think Time to Dazzle is probably the most likely speed of the speed here. Ran an absolute monster at Woodbine. And the thing to note is at Woodbine, that, that mile race was one turn. Uh, broke really sharp. This is a horse that uh, I've been waiting to break out for quite some time. Uh, showed some ability at two. And um, I've always liked this horse uh, from Mark Cassie, but... Uh, the problem I have is this horse finally did break out uh, for the wedding, but I don't know that I want to be around for the funeral. That was just such a huge race, so much bigger than anything she had run before. I think a regression is highly likely, and that's really the only thing that's turning me off time to dazzle, but will certainly be a speed influence. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going by the horses that, to me, are the classiest and ran in the best races, and to me, Buttercream Babe is a horse I've always liked, uh, has been, uh, was strong at two, and since learning how to rate just off the pace, is really coming into her own. Just ran in the Hall of Fame against the boys last time, and uh, I thought had a really good race, um, and I think is poised to run another good one. More importantly, has a positive record over Kentucky Downs, including breaking her maiden, and then followed it up with what I thought was a very good uh, effort in a stakes race, and I thought she was the best horse that day, though Crown Imperial won it. Uh, Buttercream Babe had to uh, rate off a really strong pace and still had enough to get a really good second. Uh, I think this horse has improved since two years old and is on the upswing from Mike Maker. Hasn't had a good record at Kentucky Downs so far, but his barn was clicking at Saratoga, and uh, I think this one can buck the trend. I like Buttercream Babe in this spot. Pounce is uh, cutting back in distance, and last race was, was pretty good. Um, I'm always a little reticent about horses who run a Gulfstream, or have run a Gulfstream primarily. This one has run away from Florida and been fine. Um, I'm just a little, just something in the back of my mind thinks that uh, that maybe that th this distance, I don't know. Um, I think it's going to be going to factor in the race. But um, I just wonder if maybe she needs a little bit more ground. We'll see. But Pounce is certainly one you have to consider. I'm throwing out regulatory risk. And really the only reason is that she is going on turf for the first time. Chad Brown has a positive record with first-time horses on the turf. And um, th this horse has been pretty, pretty good. But I just get the feeling, you know, that last race, an optional claimer didn't run the greatest of efforts. And uh, uh, I just kind of... Uh, think that maybe she's a, a JV type of horse for Chad Brown. Maybe he's trying to figure out uh, a place for her. So he cuts her back to turf sprints. Uh, might surprise, but I just like others better in this race. Now, Crown Imperial has a positive record over Kentucky Downs. Uh, ran, ran that stakes race I alluded to with Buttercream Babe last year and ran a really good race. Had a very hot pace to run to, and that may be the case again here, but if you look from two to three, uh, this horse has been a bit of a chalk burner to me and uh, it seems to always be the bridesmaid, never can quite get up in time and her speed figures don't really compare with some of the better horses in here. Now, I fully expect this one is going to get elevated from, 
uh, being at Kentucky Downs. But uh, to run her best effort, uh, it would have to be a really big one to overcome the class of your horses in this field. So, well, I think Crown Imperial offers some really good value at 30 to 1. Underneath, I think, is more likely, and that's what the asterisk means uh, by her name. Simply in front uh, was second to Time to Dazzle last time. Uh, and again, that was a one-turn mile. Is cutting back a distance, and I think this horse has been kind of a sleeper. Uh, I like. I really like the turn of foot. This one seems to be getting better and is in good form at the right time. Uh, and uh, cutting back in distance is a positive and uh, uh, angle-wise. So I think simply in front at 15 to 1 is a good fit in here. Uh, Vive Veuve last race uh, had a really good second uh, to pounce, I believe it was, and uh, was coming late. This is a track, as we know, that does favor closers. And uh, Vive Veuve, I think, is one that uh, looks pretty good to me of the late runners. Carry You for Cherie DeVoe is another one I think looks pretty good. And cutting back in distance may certainly help the cause. Uh, it's really hard to overlook any horse from Cherie DeVoe, of course. And uh, I think fits pretty well here. And uh, we'll need to take another step forward, but I think that's entirely possible. So Carry You, we throw in the race. But Buttercream Babe, to me... Uh, is the one I like on top, particularly at 9-2, to two, in what is a really good betting race. So we look at our wagering strategy. I'm going with Buttercream Babe on top. Uh, hopefully we can get 9-2, to two, maybe even a little better uh, if there's some heavy money on pounce. Uh, and then we're going to stagger exactors. Uh, I think Simply in Front, to me, offers a really good value at 15-1. to one. And again, the route to sprint angle here. Uh, coming off a really good second where nobody was going to catch time to dazzle that day, uh, I think can, uh, has a good scenario here. So I like simply in front as the second choice. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll also do individual exactus with uh, Vive Veuve, uh, Cariou, and of course Pounce. And then we'll key box them, 8 on top with 2, 9, 10, and 12. So uh, if we do get as we wish with Buttercream Babe on top, and hopefully uh, we get simply in front underneath. We get a nice payday, and then we get paid twice. So this is, a, again, a really good betting race. Uh, I think value is imperative here, and I think you're getting a really good price. You should with Buttercream Babe, especially since she just showed that she can acquit herself just fine against the boys. So uh, this looks uh, like her race to lose to me. Hope this helps you with your own wagering strategy. We're going to have uh, postings for all the stakes races at Kentucky Downs. And uh, again, I believe there's a rolling pick five. Uh, there are multiple pick fives to choose from. So I'm going to kind of leave that up to you. I may have one uh, later on, time permitting, when I can find the, the one I consider to be the best. But yeah, if you do choose to do a pick five, I would throw this race in there for sure. And especially if we can get Buttergreen Babe at a price to max out the ROI. So, uh, that's it for here. Uh, be on the lookout for more. I'll talk to you soon. And until then, be well.